assolutamente. Niin, saavon arvostuksen huipulla kaikkialla, minne sitä viedään, ja parhaimmillaan täällä, missä sitä tehdään. Oh, I'm onto the hood now. The hood looks good. Except for, uh, you know, all these stone chips. At least six or nine of them. So my next step here might surprise you. You look at this hood and it looks, it looks real nice. I'm actually gonna give it a quick uh, buff with compound and a rag, shine it up and just make sure there's no glaring issues. See that dent? It's a dent there. Another dent here. See him? Right there and there. So that's why I'm uh did a little bit of polishing. Is this you really can't see anything. This you can. Just a neat trick. That's what the stone chip looks like. Once you get the paint off. There's another one. Always amazes me how thick the paint is on a factory paint job. So you can see that I'm going from bare metal, tapering up to known good paint. So all this whole nose and everything will be primed and blocked, and that's half the work right there done. Here's a neat trick for replacing emblems during a paint job. First mark it out with a paint stick and a marker. Give yourself some pictures and measurement reference. Place some tape over the emblem. Using a crayon. Mark out the emblem and your edge reference. Take a piece off your longboard paper backer. Mark out the location. Save that for later reinstallation. To remove the emblem, Take a piece of welding wire, and saw through the adhesive. Using a little bit of naphtha on a rag, you can soften the adhesive a little bit. Take a plastic razor blade.
Gonna get all that adhesive off of there. rails here. You can see that I ran some tape down the edge so that I can get in there using a triangular file. See that? Just can't go over that. All that paint is failing, but all the paint from here up is fine. 
So I'm gonna try and keep my repair from here to here. And I'm probably gonna use epoxy and I'm gonna brush the whole rail. And that will be a good repair. Sometimes the simplest tools are the best tools. On this side, we got the same kind of same kind of action here. Don't look that bad. If I paint over that, no one's gonna be happy. There's a better look at what I'm talking about. figured I'd show you kind of what this process is to get to that. Here we've got one of the usual suspects. Kind of difficult to do this, but I need to watch. to see what there you go well, maybe I That's why that one little stone chip is actually a big problem. Now I'm actually below it. Like, see that? May not look like anything, but I bet it is. It's really hard to, to judge what's through and what's not. Here's another one. There's that little tiny, tiny thing. See the rust in there? Yep, can't miss them. Well, I thought we were ready, but we just ran into an issue. See that? That's an issue. Well, it's not everywhere. But I can clearly see that's some uh, delamination. Now check this out. This area here, I can just blow the paint right off using that triangular file. And back here, it'll gouge. You really don't want to try to paint over paint. It's already easily chipping off of its substrate because the paint you're putting on top is only as strong as the paint below or the adhesion between the two layers. So I go up here. See how that's not chipping off? That's good and strong. Down here, I'm guessing that I don't know, just did not adhere to the sealer close to the, close to the roof rail. So I'm gonna buzz down the whole strip with some 80 grit, paper it into the known good paint, and uh, we'll be good to go. The mission here is to salvage as much as I can because that, that's a straight roof. And if I only have to do you know, seven or eight spots. I already know what the top level is. 
so I don't have to guess as to what is going to look good with the paint on because the paint's already on. Well, that didn't take too long. Now, uh, what I did to do that was a piece of 80 grit, a piece of 220 grit on a Bondo blade. Going like this, kind of bending the top. So, not seeing the miss. I just want a little merge right here because I'd like to not have to go beyond here with primer. Well, it's getting late in the day and that's enough trouble for me to uh, call it quits for the night. I was planning on doing some primer and, you know, body work tomorrow, but you know what? Sometimes you just got to know when to call it and I'm going to do some extra prep tomorrow morning and we'll put some primer on and at the same time I can reprime all my other areas. I'm ready to put some primer on here and just showing the level of prep in these roof rails. The rust I was concerned with was up in this, the edge of the roof panel to the drip rail. And it was underneath the seam sealer, so need to put some uh, epoxy in there. And the whole edge here is going to be epoxy. And then these spots, body work over it, 2K primer. Here we go. Not much in the in the way of dents, but one, two, three, four, five, six. Not bad, kind of the same story, but not bad. Well, I guess we'll start down here. I am real glad I took that antenna off. That would have been a nasty surprise. Same process. Grind them down. Get to some good metal. Now I'm gonna go over the whole surface with an interface and 180 grit on a uh, foam pad with a little bit of Dawn dish detergent. And that'll get rid of all the dead paint. Time to put some epoxy on. A little breakthrough areas. Additional features to the trunk surface. Just a little spritz where it needs it. And I'll be putting some uh, 2K primer on tomorrow. And then I get to work on that vendor, 
that door, that door, and that quarter. Ah, oh, painting cars is easy. You just gotta sand till your arm falls off and do it again more. Well, maybe I skipped a few scenes. It's been busy in here. But that is the final coat of primer on the hood. Fender of Doom. The doors. Trunk, roof and roof rails, a little bit of block sanding on those panels and they're ready for paint. Won't be long now. Well, I'm on to the easy side of the car now. Easier, I should say. There's no major damage. At the rear of the driver's side door, right there, there's a little bit of dent action. Upon further inspection, we've got stone chip there. A little rust out right there, plus the bottom edge. A good size kind of dig mark right there. Rear passenger door. Is this going on? Some rust out kind of Hit marks right there, another one there, another one there, there and there. Another one. So, made the decision, I'm just gonna pull the trim off because the other side of the car is gonna be done so nice i'm not gonna you know it, it takes an hour to pull these off strip the adhesive and then i can actually work on wide open panels on this side i am however going to only remove the mirror door handle lock i'm going to try to mask this up and save a little bit of time there is some uh you know so i'm gonna do what i can to save some time over here but it's still it's it's still a job it's just there's no serious dents so that's uh that's a plus. So I'm gonna set up the time lapse and pull off these moldings. Down here, you can see that I've made I've made a stencil that runs along the bottom side of the belt molding. Highlights the gaps. Gives me a mounting position on this one here. All of these ones, they are just outside of the radius. So the nearest horizontal. It's just too, it's, it's too tight to try to fix that stuff. And then even if I do, there's no There's no way to do a great job on this without just pulling them off and then I can paint. I can paint all of these 
at once. They'll all match and they'll look like brand new. The, uh, the new adhesive, the foam tape adhesive is exact dimension, it's a half inch. So it'll be as simple as applying new adhesive, positioning them, and then taping them in place and then pulling the strip out when the time comes. It's gonna make life a lot easier and my fear of painting the car with them on is having runs occur like you know right here anywhere that's real close to them it's it's just a big major risk and if that was to happen i'm going to spend the same amount of time sanding and repainting and spending more money so here we go all righty then so this piece of this tape here will be handy. I'm gonna try and go with my my thumbs here. Getting it started is usually the the difficult part. And you kinda wanna like keep tension on it pull like a sawing motion you're not just pulling it through kind of like cutting on that face cutting on this face cutting on that face and then this one that is just ergonomic and comfortable now I'm going to show you what the purpose of the tape is. Once this starts to become unsupported, you don't want it to bear its own weight because it'll break. So I'll do that as I go along and we'll have that whole piece off in here in a second. Time lapse mode. Be sure to use a different part of the wire where you're hinging it around because it will eventually break there, as you saw. Good luck. Check this out. That one was barely stuck. This one was barely stuck. See all that stuff in there? This one was barely on there. All that's sitting behind it front edge had failed. So here's an example of, I'm uh, 30 minutes into doing this. Would have taken 30 minutes to tape all that up five times and sand around it. Well, got all the trim off and all the adhesive stripped. I'm gonna clean up all the stuff that I couldn't really get to. It's 
kind of like junkyard moss, but not really. It's different, different texture. Use the water and dawn solution to, you know, just kind of scare it off a little. See that stuff? bad. It's all bad. One of those things, you know, when do you stop? Well, it depends what, where you're trying to go. In this car's case, I'm trying to put a good paint job on it. So I gotta go far enough. To me, this is far enough. Now at least dealing with straight stuff. Whole side of the car is pretty good. Like take this for example. You know, there's a chip, right? Well, how'd the chip get there? See it? Impact. So there's no way to fix that. If you look below it, see that wave? I know it wouldn't show much, but it's showing up. That's the objective tonight, or this evening, or whatever time it is where you are. Time to stop what was killing this car. looks cool without the trim well I'm gonna get to uh, get the grind in here and we'll see what we get well done grinding the chips rust pits. So I'm taking the die grinder with a carbide and getting all the spots while they're still easily visible. You can see this area had quite a few. So overall not too bad. This spot here is actually gonna need some uh, actual repair I don't know how how deep it goes but that's going to take some welding a little bit of metal replacement all in all par for the course I 
this is kind of a complicated repair because I need to fix this hole. But when you go around the other side, there's all rust underneath here. So what I actually need to do is cut out this section, remove it, repair the outside, clean the inside, and weld it back in. See what I mean? I gotta get that whole piece out of there. Kinda looks like a swan. That's all the affected steel. So the only way to make a new piece that fits in there is to take out the old piece in one shot. Here, I'll show you what I mean. See? Not fine. Fine. Not fine. All right, at this point, we've got our new piece made. Now I gotta deal with uh, the rust on the surface here. I've trimmed off the old spot welds, close as I can get them. So now, I'm gonna get in here, see what I can get off, and then go back to this little guy, see how clean we can get it. I've got the area as clean as I can get it, but there's some spots, like here, I just can't really get to very well up behind there as well. So I could keep drilling and I could replace all the way, but what I'm choosing to do right now is actually gonna dissolve the rust. So I'm gonna apply it in these areas and then I'm going to let it sit and then I'm going to spray water in here and have it collect in a reservoir down there because it stinks, but gotta be done. Well, I ran out of uh, acid brushes, so I just took a piece of brake line, a little bit of fibers from another brush and made my own. Looks just like uh, nuclear Pepto-Bismol. One thing you don't want to do is you you don't want to put rust back into the bottle. Pour a little bit out into your uh, collection area. And then carefully apply. Reaction taking place. There's absolutely no point in doing a rust repair if you don't actually fix it. Alright, as you can see, it's kind of white, black, and all sorts of stuff is going on. I had a fake orders working in here, so I apologize for the terrible camera work. But you know what? You get what you get, right? I'm going to let this sit for about 10 minutes or so. And then, uh, See what we got. All right, I've got the area as clean as it's going to be. Something that I like to do, if it is possible and safe, is to actually use a blowtorch and heat the area up until you see a color change. And sometimes that will help the uh, affected steel to release the little micro rust out of it and uh, the actual rust spot has been changed into some sort of par parallelogram so I can make a piece to fit in there the um, 
Where'd he go? The actual piece that is going to be welded in here is pretty darn close. So the next step is to actually get some self-etching primer up behind here, behind there, into this edge. So I'm going to tape that up, spray what I want to spray, and not what I don't. So certain areas like this, there's going to be spot welds. Um, but basically, wherever you want to get a spot weld, you can drill that area, get clean steel, weld it. So it's actually best to get paint kind of everywhere and then make it clean where you need it clean. There's the trick right there. That's how you get that shape transferred to metal with your crayon. Take your tape, stick it on your metal, cut out your piece, and there you go. When working on cars from 1984, you always want to use period correct tools. So that piece is ready to go. You want a good fit? There is a good fit. This is a spot weld. So I'm gonna leave it just like that and it will look factory. Well, you'll know when you're getting close when you forgot where you repaired that part of the fender. Remember, I'm leaving that guy to spot weld to the inside. But it's a pretty good rough installation. So now I'm gonna get this uh, welded in here. That's the kind of fit up you want. Darn near perfect. Let's weld her up. A good way to know when your repair is done is you can't really find where you repaired it. Oh, this was supposed to be the good side, but it just wasn't. Everywhere that you can see, it's bare metal. It had some kind of a pit or a chip. Remember the rust repair back here? this pillar. Alright, let's get some self-etch on it.
Well, the hood's on. Underside is painted. Prep this uh, windshield cowl. They had that big repair there, so I don't really have much choice but to paint there so I can paint the car with the hood closed. So it makes the most sense to uh, paint that and the tops of the fenders. So that's what I'm doing. Second coat, I'm gonna do another coat in uh, about 15 minutes. Looking pretty good. <laughs> 